So we're in unit nine. We were talking about how to sketch for uh, effective logo design. We were using the slides that are in the, the proving ground number two. But let's look a little bit ahead to assignment four, which is at the end of this unit, with what you're going to do with your sketch. Once you pick your sketch approach, so here we have you know, this student's rough sketches showing uh, a central symmetrical approach, showing a dynamic approach, showing a play of positive and negative space. This was for an Earth Day logo. Um, this was what they ended up refining as a black vector shape. Now notice, this is kind of a cautionary tale as you sketch. If you rely on kind of thin line work, even at this size, it starts to become less readable, right? And the smaller it gets, the harder it is to tell that that's an, an earth and a hand. But then we're also going to do a color version. So you're going to do a black shape vector first, and then we'll do a color color version of it using layer styles. So we'll actually rasterize it just for color. This was one I did a few semesters ago, which was kind of prescient because it was called Extinct Tweet. So it was about the end of Twitter. And I just, it's a dynamic logo based on the Twitter bird. Here's one that's just a mashup of different oil company logos. It's still around, right? it's still around but it's called X. X. Which is a perfect name for something deceased. <laughs> so dramatic. It's still a I know. name. <laughs> All right. So proving ground number two. This is what you're turning in by 11.59 tonight, right? And there's two parts to it. One is getting your sketches in for whatever your idea is. Trying to keep them as simple as possible so they can just be turned into black shapes. And then the second part is writing a response to at least one class member not me, to a class member, uh, giving them your opinion and your input on their thumbnail sketches, which of their sketches has the most potential for a finished logo, and what suggestions, critiques do you have about that approach? So first you post your own sketches, right? Yeah, you've got it posted. So you got to wait till there's a few more so that you can comment on someone else's. I can delete it for you. So you would go to here, you would say edit, and then you just click on it, and you delete, and then say done. Now, this, these are my, uh, these are what I'll be demoing with this semester, right? And this follows my suggested theme. So if you go to the next part, which is where we turn in assignment four, that's just where I show you my suggested theme. So if you have no better reason for making a logo, because you, you might want to do personal branding, you might want to do it for a friend, you might want to do it for a company you really admire, for your own portfolio, but we're going to keep it in the, the public domain, right? So we talked earlier when we were talking about copyright, how this author, who created my favorite comic book series, Fables, uh, released as of uh, September 15th, all of his his writing for this series, right? So that's all all spin-offs and characters is are now in the public domain. That doesn't mean the artwork is in the public domain. It means the idea of these characters is, because he's the writer. He's the one that that came up with these versions of these fairy tale characters. So I've a, and you can read about that. So I've given you a a link to the, uh, the wiki for the characters of Fables. And you can look through, through them. You're going to recognize a lot of them. So you could do your own logo for Snow White, your own logo for the Boogeyman, which Bill Wilmingham in Fables calls Mr. Dark. You know, you could do Baba Yaga, who's also a character in this, yes. So there's a lot of kind of, it's a fun way to play with stuff for the spooky season. I'm going to do a character named Maddie, who's based on the witch Medea, and is a black cat, right? Now, I can be inspired by the different art of this character. 
So I can look up in a new tab. Maddie from the Fables, Fables comic. And I can look for images. Ooh, and then there's a deviant art. I didn't even know this. Fan art already, which is a really beautiful example of a character branding logo, right? Might not, might not be that good. I don't have the time. <laughs> but there are lots of examples. And one thing you'll notice is that Maddie has this really cool kind of hooked spade at the tail. And I forgot that because I sketched it without looking at any reference, which I often do because I try to be original and, and not derivative. But that doesn't mean your sketches can't be improved as you turn them into a vector. People like this character so much, they get themselves tattooed with it, right? You want your, your logo design to be that powerful. But it's a pretty simple idea. It's this black cat that's actually like a shape-shifting witch. And it just has that little kind of hooked. A, a screen grab is command shift four. I'm doing it constantly. <laughs> now you can find other inspirations too. So these are some inspirations that, that aren't directly related to that Maddie character, but this is a central symmetrical of a black cat. Again, we're doing the pictorial logo, not the logo type, though this is a combined mark with both. Here's a dynamic. Here's a dynamic example, and here's kind of a play of positive and negative space, right? Where the empty space makes a shape as well. So you can be inspired by anything. I'm going to add to my inspirations. And I'm going to do Maddie from Fables. Okay, then I'm going to take a picture of my sketches. So this is my choice. And I'll bring in some of these inspiration photos. But I want whatever logo solutions I come up with to be incredibly clear, more clear than these illustrations, right? Less nitpicky, more basic. Incredibly um, versatile, which means they need to be able to scale really well. So this one, it is really cool, but it wouldn't actually scale all that well. And I don't like how it's cropped on the bottom because that means from different orientations, it might look a little weird. It's trapped inside a rectangle. So that, that even though it's black shapes and really clear that way, it's maybe not as versatile as the one I want to make for the ideal logo. Because if you put this on a baseball cap, for instance, it's a little weird that it, it crops off and, and kind of implies a rectangle. But I do like the spookiness of it. Okay, so how do I get my sketches in? Well, I take a picture with my, with my phone. I could use a scanner as well. These are multiple ways. You can input raster images into a computer, pixel-based images. So I took the picture, now I'm going to put the picture into my Google Photos. And I'd say we definitely want to get our sketches in in the next half hour by 11 o'clock so that you can start commenting on other people's sketches. And as long as your sketches show all three approaches, central, uh, dynamic, and a play of positive and negative space, you're going to be in good shape. All right, I'm going to download it from my, from my phone, get it onto my computer. Goes to downloads, move it to... And then what I like to do is open it up in preview and then just clean up the photo a little bit using what I know of raster imaging and compositing, right? So Maddie or Medea, these are my sketches. And I'm just going to go to Tools, Adjust Color. 
And then I'm going to make them a little bit brighter and the dark's a little bit darker. I'll show you once I get these posted. Just so that they're, they're really visible to your classmates, right? So I have central symmetrical here. It's helpful if you label them for your classmates. I have dynamic here. And I have a play of positive and negative space here because I have this idea of this kind of M crown as this shape that's being cut out of the black shape. They can be incredibly loose and small. They're supposed to be. They're thumbnails. So reference, you do not need. I didn't actually have any references when I made my sketches. But then you might, you might modify them with reference. And I think inspiration and reference is always helpful. But all you need to post are your sketches for proving ground number two. All right, so you'll see them there. Now, to post your sketches, you don't actually need to post them in assignment four. You need to post them in proving ground number two. So you'll see where I posted them here. And then the next part is to comment on someone's post. So to do that, you go underneath their post, you click on reply. And you reply by saying, uh, you click on reply right here below and upload your three sketches to meet the first criterion. And then you want to respond to at least one other student's sketches with your feedback about which of their logo solution sketches is strongest and feedback about the strengths and challenges you see with that approach. And you do that by clicking on reply underneath their posts. And that will meet the second part of this rubric for, for creative problem solving. This skill in creative problem solving for this proving ground is exercising convergent and divergent thinking. So what is convergent thinking? It's understanding how everyone else thinks about something and making it a clear image that communicates that. And then divergent thinking is to try to come up with new solutions. And that's where having those three separate approaches comes in. Central, symmetrical, dynamic, and plays with positive and negative space. And you get credit just for your attempt at it, right? You don't need to not all of them need to be wonderfully successful or that you're excited about turning into vectors because once you get input from other students then you'll decide which one you want to turn into a vector so how did i modify mine already based on reference these were the sketches i made without reminding myself with reference and then i just modified my sketches by adding that little tail shape, right? And that actually kind of changed the game, I think, for me, where I was liking the play of positive and negative space, but now with that little tail hook, that gets me really into the dynamic one. So I'm thinking I like the dynamic one. So if I was gonna comment on my own, which is not the requirement, but I'll demonstrate, You say which one you like the best, and then you say what you think is good about it or what you think can be challenging about it. So I, I like the dynamic one because I think the movement is strong. And it engages you in the details, especially that, that end of the tail, since that's not expected. And then I'm going to say a challenge. The challenge it has is in the subtlety. I think I'm spelling that right. Of the organic shapes. And that's why you can see when I design even a thumbnail for a logo, and I, I'll pass it around so you can. You see, they're not supposed to be big. 
you can see how much